Good morning and praise the Lord Church. Welcome to service. September is here and the kids are already back to school. God has gifted us this first Sunday in September that we can come together to worship our Lord. It is time to refresh our souls and celebrate Jesus. We are coming to your homes live on Zoom. This morning's scripture reading is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 30. We'll be reading verses 4 and 5 and also verses 10 to 12. I'll be reading in the NIV version. Psalms 30, verses 4 and 5. Sing to the Lord, you saints of His. Praise His holy name. For His anger lasts only a moment but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Verses 10 to 12. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing to you, not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. May God bless the reading of his word. Psalms 30 is a psalm of David, a psalm of thanksgiving for God's great deliverances in his life. The focus of this psalm is on God, and the greatness of his deliverance. David gives thanks to the Lord. It's a call to sing praises to our God, for he is the king of all the earth. Worship is our growing awareness of God's presence in our life. David calls upon us to praise God and to trust in the Lord. When we come before the presence of God with praise and worship, the Lord will remove our sackcloth and replace it with joy that our hearts will not remain silent. God's joy and blessing will triumph over temporary adversity for the one who looks to the Lord in mercy. In verse 12, King David closed this song for the dedication of his house with a determination to thank God forever. Like David, let's determine to thank and praise the Lord forever, for he is the everlasting, eternal God. May God anoint us to exalt his holy name with our praise and worship. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. You are God who changes our wailing into dancing. Thank you, Lord, your anger is but for a moment. Your favor is for life. You have clothed us with joy that our hearts may sing your praises. For you alone are worthy of all praise and worship. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Help us to be faithful to your glorious call to worship you, my Lord. Lord, thank you for this month you have gifted us. Anoint the service this morning. Comfort the hearts of the people who are in distress. Bless your people with spiritual and physical healing. Anoint your servant, Pastor Alex, this morning as he brings forth your word. Enlighten our hearts and minds to receive your word, to honor and to obey you. Bless the worship team, bless the tech team for their sacrifice and joy in serving you. Keep every family safe and help us to draw nearer to you, giving praise. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord together with songs of praise. You call me 
Living in the light of your goodness 
are delighted, excited, blessed to be with you uh, this morning. Thank you so much for joining uh, to worship the Lord together with uh, our church family, wherever you are. You know, we are so delighted we can have this platform together to study God's word, to worship the Lord and praise him and pray together. And if you have a prayer request, if you love to have any kind of ministry needs, please uh, let us know. We are here to support you in any way that we can. We are going to begin a new series from the book of 1 Peter, the letter of Apostle Peter. And this is a very relevant book, the time and season that we are in. So we are going to dive in and study what God's word teaches during this time, how we will be able to respond to the time and the troubles that we are going through during this season. Hey, I have a question for you. Have you ever traveled to a place where you did not speak the native language. You know, we all know that we have a sp traveling to abroad that affect our uh, sense of equilibrium. You know, that our times, sense, zones are changing. The language is different. The currency must be, you know, changed. And uh, the, the normal things that we do daily become a enormous difficulty for us sometimes to find out how to do what to do and those things. Even though we know the language, the natives can easily find out that with our accent and the way we pronounce the words and uh, the way we, we communicate, people can realize that, oh, he is not from this person or she is not from this, uh, this place. So same way that Apostle Peter is writing uh, to a group of Christians, those who are scattered in Asia Minor. And uh, they lost their status. They are away from their homeland and not only that, the state itself is against them. And the state is persecuting the Emperor Nero. And the state government is against these people. And severely persecuting, accusing for the fire that has happened in the, in the city. And these people has nothing to look forward. A majority of them that came from Gentile background to the a Christian faith. And these people are persecuted simply because of their faith and they are scattered around the, uh, around the country in the Roman Empire. So these people have a lot of concerns in their heart. Peter is writing to this group of people, encouraging them how to live their life, how to respond to the challenging situations that they are in. And this is a book preeminently about hope. Talk about holiness. Talk about humility. And that is what Apostle Paul Peter is writing to this group of uh, people. When we talk about Peter, we know that, you know, Peter, what comes to our mind when we talk about Peter? You know, Peter was a man, he spent uh, most of his adult life speaking for uh, Jesus. But when we, we know that Peter was an impulsive person and uh, he walked on the water and God, Jesus, used this unschooled man to establish his uh, church. And But the one thing that we always think about Peter, when we remember Peter, is that his denial about his uh, beloved master. But it is very interesting that after the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus told Mary, go and tell the disciples and Peter, and Peter. Now that always encourages me. Jesus tells uh, to Peter, your denials will not disqualify serving me. Jesus recommissioned Peter and he asked that pointed question towards, uh, Jesus asked that question to, to Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter was so bitterly, you know, uh, painful in his heart knowing that he is standing before the all-knowing master, he knows everything. And his answer was, he said, I love you, I love you. Then, and he said, Lord, you know everything. You know everything. Jesus recommissioned him, asked him to feed the lamb. You know, he asked him to, to take care of his church and tend my sheep and feed my sheep. So here Peter writes, the letter starts with this uh, statement. He introduced himself in such a way. That was a normal way of introducing uh, the letter uh, to the audience and Peter says, Sir, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Peter, an apostle of uh, Jesus Christ. Now Peter's experiences 
Peter's election both enabled him uh, to preach God's word, uh, to write this truth uh, to the scattered people. His experiences, even his uh, denials, even his failures, God used those experiences to teach him a lesson. Remember this truth. You know, our experiences will not grow, go in vain. And God knows that what we are going through into our life. And the Bible teaches that every tears that he bottles and he keeps it and God will answer and hear and understand that pain and the tears that go through. So every experience that we go through in life, that will not be wasted in any way. God will use us for our good and for his glory. And God chose this unschooled man uh, to be an apostle of the church and to establish church. Thousands of people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. To open the kingdom of God to the Gentiles. Jesus used, God used the, this man. So Peter write this letter to these people. So we, get, we look into the first nine or ten verses of this uh, first chapter uh, today. And go very fast and try to understand how we are able to respond to the life uh, struggles in our life. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 through 9. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect strangers in the world scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus and sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and to an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power, until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice through now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. This have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even through refined by fire may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him, now you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Peter writes his people. Look at this. Just want to ask one more question in your heart actually. How do you view your life? How do you see your life? Remember, this is very crucial. Our outlook about life determines our approach towards our life. Our outlook towards our life determines our approach towards life. How you see life in your mind. You know, that metaphor, whatever that comes in your mind when you think about life, that metaphor determines your values, your goals, your priorities. And you will discover that these are important metaphors. And uh, you know, if some people see life is like a circus. It is just uh, hanging over there and it is a miraculous way somehow they try to survive. Some people see life as a roller coaster. It is like a go up and down all the time. Some people just see life is just go round and round and round. Some people see life as a puzzle. You know, it is mysterious. They don't know what is the next and how these things are unfolding into their life. Some people see life just a drama. They think they are the actors on the stage and they just want to run that show somehow and finish their role. And that is all life is all about to many people. So that metaphor is very important. You know, keep that in mind. Our outlook to life determines our approach to life. That outlook to life determines our approach life and how we define our life ultimately determines our destiny also. So this is very crucially important. If you see life is like a party and you just want to have fun all the time. 
if you see life is like a marathon you know endurance is your value you know that this only end here so i want to do this one day at a time if you see life is like a you know race speed and efficiency become your values and the life is become a game if you just want to win somehow so the different way people see their life but peter gives a clue to the suffering christians those who are scattered around this uh, asia minor and roman empire and he gives them an idea a concept to understand as a christian how they should view their life or who we are how we view our life that is what peter is seeing over here so our perspective on life will determine how we invest our time how we spend our money how we use our talents and how you nurture our relationship and even how you view the troubles and trials difficulties and sufferings and problems into our life so those are crucial things so just to have that mental picture that in your mind how you view a life you know here paul peter writes here in this is not just not a theological treaty it is just a practical book and peter encourages these people to view life in such a way and so they will be able to respond the trials and troubles they face in their life and they can conduct their life in such a way also so as peter there are three themes that we can see basically he talk about uh, salvation we talk about suffering we talk about uh, submission or in another way we can say that uh, first peter is a major theme that is revolving around uh, about about holiness and about hope and uh, humility hope holiness and uh, uh, humility so paul peter writes here he he tell these people first of all he ask them to see you know he he write and tell these people to god's elect strangers in the world scattered go to god's elect strangers in the world scattered those two words are important chosen by god scattered around the around the roman empire but you are pilgrims you are strangers you are aliens that is what the crucial point to get into your mind how you view our life peter tell them we are aliens we are strangers we are pilgrims in the land the word strangers introduces this crucial idea and the god's people are pilgrims sojourners exiles on earth we are living in a foreign land this is not our home that is the theme that is what we have to see life this is not our permanent home we are aliens in this place we are living in this uh, place we are is a temporary land we are in we are just traveling through we are just passing through pilgrims refers to a temporary resident in a foreign place and of course these believers are scattered you know geographically that is true but moreover that peter is telling that all believers all christians their understanding about life is that we are sojourners we are just passing through our citizenship is in heaven our king is the king of kings no none of the worldly emperors or rulers or prime ministers or presidents you know we are not belongs to this world that they are not our leaders in that sense of course they are god has set these people over there to rule but we our king our, our our loyalty is towards heaven our citizenship is in heaven as paul writes to philippians 3 verse 20 paul writes he says that but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there the lord uh, jesus christ who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body so we are strangers in this land we are aliens here we are pilgrims we are sojourners we are just passing through this place this is not our permanent place that is an interesting and important truth we have to consider we have to view ourselves when we understand and view ourselves our attitude towards everything will change 
our attitude towards assets will change because we know that this is not permanent our attitude towards uh, our association will change our attitude towards our appearance will change and our attitude towards the applause of the people will change because we know that this is not the permanent home in any way at all but unfortunately many of the people those who think that their roots are firmly you know here that we seldom focus on the real home and it is too easy to think that this is all that there is many people their philosophy of life is that eat drink and make merry tomorrow will die just an existential world view and they think that they are uh, you know enjoyment pleasure doing the things for themselves that is all it matters that's why many many people unfortunately leave cs lewis once wrote like this he said it is since christians have largely ceased to think of other world that they have become so ineffective in this because christians ceased to think about the other world they become so ineffective in this world or in the other way the other side of the coin we can say that when we become think about the other world we become more effective witnesses in this world when we look at the history of the church the first century church the church what happened they all believed that jesus will return into their lifetime so they were so passionate and eager to share this gospel to everybody those who come across in their life that was their purpose and plan always that was their passion to do it the moment you and i lost the hope of the coming world when we lose the hope over the permanent home and when we are forgetting that we are aliens and strangers in this land we try to survive and bring our roots here that became a problem to the church we read about the heroes of faith in hebrew chapter 11 you know what we read there the hebrew chapter 11 that we read they confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on this land they know this is not our permanent home abraham for example was a rich man we are talking about the patriarchs but even when they are rich they didn't think about this richness is that they are all they know that there is nothing is more there they, they are looking for where the city whose architect and builder is god himself that was their desire and dream as they live So Peter repeat this theme again and again in this book chapter 1 verse 17 that he says that uh, we have to conduct our verses carefully through, throughout the time for stay here in chapter 2 verse 11 Peter pleads with these people and with us he says that beloved i beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust which war against uh, your soul so that is an important principle so our outlook will determines our approach uh, to life this world is like a bridge we are just passing through no wise man will ever build a house upon the bridge so peter is teaching our life on earth is only temporary our home is eternal and that is why he encourages the suffering brothers and sisters to focus upon the hope that there is and uh, we have to to do not get depressed and discouraged as we go through this time so our approach you know look at this is the primary thing when we look and understand that this world is just a temporary place when we understand that this is we are just so generous passing through this place that is where we will able to view our success and failures our sufferings and our trials and everything from that kind of a perspective and peter says that we are scattered yes literally these people are scattered but moreover that we all are so scattered god has placed us in different places and especially during this season and time church is scattered and for a purpose wherever god has placed us to be faithful and to preach the gospel and live for his glory that is what god wants us to do at this uh, time over here so peter is reminding these folks that they are home not home yet and remind yourselves that yes the nero is persecuting the church they are doing all kinds of atrocities against the church and they have to run for their life all those things are true why because christians are social misfit they are aliens you know they are aliens in their own hometown this is not their house and this is not their place 
what made them aliens that is what the verses two onwards that peter says that what made our salvation our salvation made us strangers in the world the salvation made us strangers in the world peter writes here verse 2 elect according to the four knowledges of god you are chosen according to the four knowledge of god the father through the sanctifying work of the spirit for obedience to jesus christ and sprinkling by his blood look at this uh, reference of trinity over here we are selected by god the father we are sanctified by the holy spirit we are sprinkled by the blood of uh, jesus we are chosen you know even for the foundation of the world so these people again think that they have no status but look at what Paul, peter is trying to teach them and tell them remember god has chosen you even before the foundation of the earth he knew you he knew each of you and god has called us by name and now, of course there is a lot of theological thing that to discuss with that we don't have the time to go through this the sovereignty of god the responsibility of man all those things god in his uh, sovereign grace chose us but by we respond to him by faith it is our responsibility so the sovereignty of god and the responsibility of man goes hand in hand always it is not competing competing rather it is complementary that we see you know he was selected by god the father you are sanctified by we are set apart for a purpose for god that is what that word means sanctified you know you are set apart for god's use you are chosen by god for his use and you are cleansed by his blood to obey him whatever christ has done for us look at this and he is telling these people our outlook we are aliens and strangers and pilgrims in this land and how does that we become aliens and strangers in this world because of our salvation how does our salvation happen god the father has chosen us the holy spirit has sanctified us and the jesus has cleansed us by his blood we become the children of god because of that god has selected us thanks the spirit has sanctified us and uh, we are sprinkled by the blood of jesus so you have a status the status is you are aliens in this world you know you are a social misfit in this place you know you don't belong to this place that is for many things that we are not able to adjust here you know we are able to to identify with the many of the things of this world that become very natural to us the reason is why it is simply because we are saved and how does that happen is that peter explains here so here peter says that we are chosen one of god the father and the son and the holy spirit involved in our salvation so look at what peter says to these people those people those who felt like nobody you know they become the prey of this uh, government they've been persecuted by this people miserably attacked cruelly attacked by this people and there is no one else to support and do anything for them but peter says that our outlook this is not our permanent home we are in the enemy's territory that is why we go through this persecution and but remember that we are chosen by the father we are sanctified by the spirit we are cleansed by the blood of jesus and that is the reason so we are pilgrims we are chosen we are sanctified we are washed by his blood but not only that we have great assets now we have great assets count your assets identify your assets now i will read it from the uh, the message bible that verses verses 3 through 5 this is what it says look at listen to me please carefully this is what it says what a god we have and how fortunate we are we have to him this father of our master jesus because jesus was raised from the dead we have been given a brand new life and have everything to live for including a future in heaven and the future starts now god is keeping careful watch over us and the future the day is coming when you will have it all life heal and whole 
what are the things that we have over here peter says here we have god <laughs> we have god not only that we have god then what we have god and we have new life we have new life and we have a living hope we have a inheritance we have god when we say we have god what it means god belongs to us i belong to god you know the god the omnipotent the omniscient the infinite the creator of this universe is mine i have that relationship with him so you are aliens you are strangers you are pilgrims you are sojourners in this land that is true but that is not the end of the story god the bible says that peter tells his people we have god himself god is our we have chosen by god praise be to the god the father of our lord jesus christ in his great mercy he has given us this new birth he has, he has given us a new life salvation makes us dead to the sin and alive to the righteousness of christ and we have a living hope our hope is living because it finds its focus in the resurrection of uh, jesus christ and this is then it says that we have uh, an inheritance and peter used triple word picture to describe this inheritance you know what is an inheritance our inheritance can never perish it can never spoil or fade these are three verbal adjectives indicates that the inheritance is untouched by death and stained by evil and unimpaired by time our or in other way we can say our inheritance is death proof sin proof and time proof this is going to last for ever so look at this what what we are this is the, our approach here to understand this we are aliens and pilgrims we are just sojourners we are strangers in this land our salvation made those things but the salvation has happened how the salvation was happened by by god himself we have nothing to do with that salvation from the beginning to the end is the work of god the father has chosen us the spirit has sanctified us the son has cleansed us by his blood and now we have this asset we have god we have new life we have living hope we have this uh, inheritance not only that you know what happened it says that we have the protection of god we are kept by the power of god yes many of these people went through this severe suffering some of them lost their life but even the death cannot touch them because they are going to be with the father with the lord for ever and ever so remember that thing we are kept by the power of god we are kept by the power of god so we are strangers pilgrims chosen by god sanctified by the spirit washed by his blood we have this great asset and so what happened how we are going to respond the things of this world this is our encouragement especially during this time of panic how do we respond either with our success or our suffering how we are going to respond to our life and peter encouraged his people what are the things we are doing because of all these things that we have our approach towards life because of this undeniable fact about our salvation how we are going to respond to the things of this world peter encourages people we rejoice in our trials we rejoice in our trials peter know first hand what temptations and trial can do to a person peter went through that personally with these things either through his uh, temptations of denying jesus or the trials that he went through by the persecution of the jewish leaders many occasions and he was jailed that we read in acts chapter 12 he was he was scorned many times all the people know that in first and it's not just a theory he is writing he experienced these things but people say is that during the time of this uh, manifold uh, trials in a god did not cause us to suffer or this pain but he does not allow it to be wasted god will use those things and peter says that there are purposes in our trials we suffer our trials so that the faith may be proved genuine verse 7 peter says that the key word there is the faith the trials can often do destroy the lives of those who have no faith in christ but peter uses the analogy of gold which is tested or refined with the fire we go this fiery furnaces 
and paul peter uses a analogy of that peat gold being purified when it goes through the fire some of you may be going through this fiery furnaces metaphorically speaking in your life and what does that does to us then that fiery furnaces just cleanses from all our impurities as job said when he tests me i will come out as pure gold so all the impurities will be melted away you become more like him during those trials the true metal as we say will come out because the fire and god will strengthen us peter always put our lives in perspective the suffering of life only temporary it is not just an inconvenience we must endure it at this present time and god in his grace will use even that for our good i remember that these trials cannot destroy us because as the words prior to said we are kept by the power of god we are kept by the power of god because of that we cannot be destroyed at all and so how do we respond to this uh, trials this become fiery furnaces uh, to purify the impurities from us and then peter says verse 8 and 9 he says that how do we respond in the midst of this suffering you know the world the devil the flesh want to deny when we go through this fire you know remember that uh, job's wife told to job just to deny god and die that was an advice sometimes the devil try to prompt into our ears but look at what peter says though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the goal of your faith the salvation of the souls oh what a beautiful verses it is right look at that words of peter says that you know peter says that this is the basis of christian faith and they help us to understand that keep us going during the difficulties and trials of our life what do we do and why we do that and this is a simple answer we are what we are we do what we do because of lord jesus christ you know christianity is christ christianity is not a religion it is a relationship it is a relationship with uh, jesus christ the world will not understand that why the people go through this kind of trials and why they would deny jesus at that time peter said we love him even though you haven't seen him you love him and peter realized that it is one of the greatest revelation that peter realized in his life was that there was a time peter walked with jesus and peter walked on the water he saw the glory of jesus all those things one day he told jesus even though everybody deny you i will not i am willing to die for you peter did know that how much that words means he was sincere i believe that he was sincere when he said that he was not only just boasting but there is a day and time came in peter's life that a test came the test came whether he is going to risk his own life or he is going to love his master do he love him and his life more than his master when the test came bitterly realize in his life that peter loved him his life more than his master he loved himself more than the master that is what he believed that is what he knew he realized and find out that later very very painfully we read that when the rooster crow jesus turned and look at their eyes were just crossed peter cried bitterly no look at me what a miserable man that i am that was his greatest revelation what was the greatest restoration also later jesus asked that question do you love me more than you love this or that any of those things peter realized that this is struggle that we face in our life you know the greatest transformation happened when peter's life changed forever then start to a new journey in his life when he start to love the master more than his own life then there is a day and time came he was willing to be crucified die 
as a martyr for his master. He didn't care at that time. Remember that these people, those who fiery furnaces, very persecution and trials and sufferings in their life. How do they face that thing? Peter says that, oh, you do this because you rejoice in your trials knowing that it has value. It purifies all the impurities and you love him. You love him. You love Jesus. And not only that in verse 8, you believe him. We believe him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. We are living in a very sensual world. The world judges everything based on evidence, based on what they see or hear or smell or touch or feel. That's the way. But we have a people of faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. The world says that seeing is believing. You know, but remember that these apostles and the disciples and the believers, they don't just see, but they believe. They believe this is a matter of faith. This is a matter of faith. Remember that, you know, somebody said like this, no apostles ever remembered Jesus. Because you remember somebody, those who died. But you know, they all said, I know him. Paul said, Peter said, all these people said, they, they, I know him. Because they know that Jesus is alive. They are in him. They have a living relationship with uh, Jesus. That is what they leave, did and lived. So Christian faith operates in the realm of faith. Realm of faith. So these people, what happened? They believed. They loved. They believed. They rejoiced. They have this inexpressible joy. And verse 8 goes on. It says that and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. The King James Version uses the word joy unspeakable and full of glory. Unspeakable literally means above words. When even the midst of these trials and persecution, these people are rejoicing. You know, we read Acts, again in Acts, Acts about the people, those who are scorned by the apostle of the Jewish council. They went rejoicing. Consider, you know, God called them to be worthy to be persecuted for his cause. So they were rejoicing. Remember that there today, millions of people around the world is suffering for this gospel. For the sake of Christ and the truth of Christianity. But they not just abandoning it. You know there are more blasphemy laws are passed by may several Islamic countries. All these places. But remember the people those who gladly go through this persecution knowing the truth. Because they love Jesus. They believe in him. They know that they are with him. That gave them inexpressible joy. The unspeakable joy, joy beyond the words. Again, let's go back all these things. How do they able to do all these things? Because they consider themselves as pilgrims, aliens, strangers in this uh, world. So then verse 9, that Peter says that, For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your faith. You know, they say that that is the living hope. They are looking forward for this uh, blessed hope uh, that they have into their lives. They keep their eyes on the prize. What is a prize? They are going to receive the goal of faith. What is the goal of faith? Ultimately, the salvation of our souls. We are saved. We are being saved today. And we will be ultimately saved one day. They are looking forward for that day. They are going to be like uh, Jesus one day. That is what they are looking forward to. So let us conclude here in this portion. You know, this is the theme of this uh, book. And Peter says that, what do you do? How can we rejoice in the midst of trials? How, what would be our focus in the midst of our sufferings? Peter says that we are just a temporary residents here. We are strangers and aliens and pilgrims in this place. And we are going to receive an imperishable, undefiled defiled inheritance. We have God himself. Because of that, what we are going to do? We are going to rejoice in our trials over here. Do you consider yourself as a stranger in this world? Or you think that we are going to live here forever and ever? Do you have a hope about an eternal home? You consider yourself in such a way? How should your relationship to this world change when you view your life in such a way? Today, as we conclude here, would you please pray that God will give you that kind of an understanding 
and wisdom in your heart and life so that you will be able to effectively serve him in this world so remember your attitude your approach towards god to this world we are aliens but we have a great asset you know we are saved by the choice of god we are elected chosen by god we are sanctified by his spirit we are sprinkled by his blood the salvation made us aliens in this world but we have a great inheritance we have a great asset we have god himself we have new life we have new hope and we have a because of that we respond to this world we rejoice in our suffering we love jesus we believe in him may the lord bless you as you look into your life in such a way and if you go through these difficult times in this season especially let us look unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith live for his glory all the days of our life amen and amen Thank you again for joining 
I hope that this study will encourage you to live for the Lord and walk with him faithfully and respond to your ups and downs in a proper manner and experiencing this inexpressible joy in your heart and life. And I just want to pray with you as you are joining us today here. May God's Holy Spirit continue to bless and guide you for his glory. Let us pray together. Father, we are so grateful for uh, making us your children through your son Jesus Christ. Thank you for your sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives, O oh Lord. God, in the midst of our trials and challenges and difficulties, enable to understand that, Lord, our citizenship is in heaven and we, do, we don't belong to this world. We are just passing through this enemy's territory. Help us, O oh Lord, to trust you and, to, Lord, live for you and for your glory. So today, Father, we commit our lives to you and anyone those who are with us, those who don't know you, oh Father, we pray that you call them and they will be able to respond to you and say yes to you, oh God. Lord, we pray your Holy Spirit continue to guide, bless each of our dear ones. Anyone, those who go through trials and difficulties in their life, oh God, I pray that you strengthen them. Anybody, those who are persecuted for the faith, Lord, we pray that help them to, uh, to experience your joy and uh, Lord, their love will increase, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your cleansing work in our hearts and our lives. Oh God, we pray for the entire church body, every families. God, for the city that we are living in, the nation that we are living in. We pray for this country and around the world, oh Father. We pray, Father, you bring a Lord solution to this pandemic that we are going through. So many people, those their love, life and livelihoods, oh God. Oh God, we pray that you have compassion and mercy over our people. Bless us together. We thank you again for the privilege you gave us to worship you and honor you and bless you, God. We love you. We praise you. We thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Now may the never-failing, everlasting, unconditional, eternal love of our Father, the sustaining, strengthening grace of our Lord Jesus, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit that guides us in all the truth with all of us now and forevermore. Amen and amen.